So we're now moving to the final Q&A session. Um, and there's been a few more questions come in uh, while Stuart's been presenting. Some of them have been related to water flow. So apologies while I look away and just sort of work those through. Um, one of the questions was, what does it cost to register for water flow? Um, Stuart, do you want to answer that one? Uh, yeah, uh, water flow is completely free to register. Both the iPhone, Android, and uh, web version is completely free. So everything you've shown is free? Yeah. Great. Um, got another one here maybe that, Stuart, you can answer. Um, is temporary water from above the Barma choke likely to be readily available in the last few months of 2019-20? Uh, or if available in limited amounts, will it continue to be immediately secured by corporate bodies and water investors? Um, you in a position to answer that one, Stuart? Yep. So I think as I, as I discussed in the water flow video, I uh, showed the market overview section. Uh, and in, with the, in, in there, we have the uh, connectivity part. So here we can see that the, the barber choke limit is currently showing it's open, but with a very low volume. It's showing a zero megalitres, but I, I think on, it's currently at 0 0.5. And so we can use the notification section. Um, we can set an alert for when the IVT opens. Um, and in terms of the second part of the question, what we're witnessing here is that it's, it's a very competitive space, lower, low availability of water generally across the southern basin. We're seeing a range of purchases and people participants purchasing when, when it opens. But I think the key point is that unless the choke opens with a large volume, um, which will allow a lot of people to participate, it will continue to close pretty quickly if, there's a large, if there is a large differential in price um, across the system there. Great. Um, so it remains a pretty competitive space. I guess the outlook for mine is that it's there's not a lot there. Um, obviously, we can't really predict can we, Stuart, as to what's going to happen in terms of whether that will open. Um, but I guess we've observed with all of the IVTs this year that they're very competitive and when they do open, they open pretty quickly. And I would encourage people to look at uh, what's available now in terms of on water flow, but also on uh, some of the state government sites and federal government sites in terms of notification services that are available so that you can be notified when, when they open. Um, at this point in time, none of them are absolutely real time. So if, if you know it's getting close and, and you think it might open, keep an eye on it um, as well. But uh, that's a good way of keeping track of where things are at. Or if you're worried something's going to close, you can also set notifications up that way with, with our app and, and even with other water market apps that are out there. Um, but I'm just reiterating it is, is free to register and use everything that's been shown today is free and that's the benefit of having got a grant from the federal government. Uh, I've got a question here on, can the presenters comment on the influence on temporary water prices that the need to balance your use versus your allocation? Um, and is this impacting on the efficiency of the market? Um, obviously in times like what we've witnessed in 2019, 20, and if um, 2021 ends up being another dry year, it's of heightened importance that, that irrigators are keeping a really close eye on on their use of water um, and what is actually available under your licensing arrangements for your water. Um, and this is particularly important um, when prices are high because you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you've used more than you have available and you have to step into the market to make up the difference. So it's, it's a time of, you know, so these times when we encourage people to be absolutely vigilant in terms of what they got in terms of their use. And um, part of that will come out of the quarterly balancing information. Um, but we encourage you even just to keep an eye on your understanding as to the use and how often you're having to apply water um, to the crop. Um, I've just had a comment from one of the other presenters come through saying that um, we will be issuing um, a list of FAQs at the end of um, this session to cover off on anything that uh, I might have missed in terms of key questions or um, that there wasn't someone on the 
uh, who was available to, to answer it. But I think we've covered off on, on pretty much all of the questions that they've had thus far. I'm just going to my question log and I noticed that there's um, going to be, there's a couple more questions here. There's one more here on carryover. Um, is there going to be carryover allowed from 1920 to 2021 season? Uh, I think we've probably covered off on that one already, but I don't know if Jared, if you want to add anything further? Certainly, uh, people that demonstrate underuse uh, in 1920 um, would be eligible for uh, private carryover should the Minister announce private carryover being made available on the 15th next week. Excellent. So if, if they've got it and it's available, it, it should be available next year, subject to um, where we start heading over the, over the balance of the next couple of months in terms of rainfall and, and availability across the Southern Basin. And, and we've all... So, Rod, it's Dan here. Um, so the call will be made next week on whether carryover is available for next year or not. And um, so basically, it's a function really of the starting allocation as of 1 July. And given that we're already at a very low level of storage um, and lower than last year, uh, people can draw their own conclusions regarding the likelihood of it being announced next week. Yep. And we also have a reasonable volume of uh, water for private carryover sitting up in Dartmouth as well. There's just under 100 gigalitres uh, sitting in there and we haven't called upon uh, that volume of water this year. So we're still waiting on the MDA's final numbers, but certainly um, the call will be finalised next week. But obviously given current storage levels, um, you'd say it's likely. Thank you both. Um, I'm just looking, it looks like the, the questions have largely petered out at this stage. There may be some that I've missed, apologies if I have, but we will capture those in, in FAQs. Uh, we just had a nice comment come in saying, excellent presentation, great value, and really appreciated. Thanks very much for everyone. Look, from our perspective, thanks very much. We've had over 300 participants in this webinar, which is a really great outcome. Um, I'd like to, in, in making some closing remarks, um, make sure that everyone clicks on the resources uh, that are on the webinar and that um, they note that you know, free access to, to water flow, if that's something that is a benefit to you. I'd like to thank uh, the various participants. Uh, we've had Jared Eaton, Dan Jordan, Kim Walton, Stuart McLaughlin, uh, and Christine Feiberg, who's been sitting in the background as well, assisting us, and Amanda Lay, who's been assisting us at our end as well in making all of this happen. Uh, this has come to you with thanks from the Department of the Environment and Water and PERSA. Um, there's another one, uh, another webinar that will be coming, so keep an eye out for, first of all, the minimum projected opening allocation announcements next Wednesday, the 15th of April. It will be uploaded to the Department of the Environment and Water's website and will be distributed by email. Um, I understand that there's going to be another one of these webinars in May and also in July. So stay tuned for those. Um, again, make sure you click on the resources online. Um, and obviously, as we haven't got to necessarily every single question, um, that we, if we haven't covered off on anything, we will be sure to be looking to respond to those either in person or through the FAQs. Thanks very, very much, everyone, for your time and for participating in the webinar. Thanks for persisting with the technology issues that we had with the sound at the start, uh, I think we got to a good place. My name's Rod Carr, I'm with Marston Jacob. Uh, I hope that you all stay safe and wish you all the best. Thanks very much.